Welcome to Political Science 120, U.S. National Government and Politics. I am your professor, Professor McManaway, um, and I will be joining you this semester, this very short spring semester, on this journey through an overview of our U.S. governmental and political systems. This is a brief lecture that will accompany your syllabus, um, so you should have a copy of that with you either downloaded or printed out, or both. Um, while you watch this video. This is going to go over some of the key elements of the syllabus and I will try and reference exactly what is in the syllabus as we do that. So let's get started. First, a little bit about me. Um, not because I think I'm so special, but because I think that you have a right to know who you are learning from. So I have a complicated name, Professor Sachs McManaway. Professor McManaway is fine. Um, I have a lot of letters behind my name because I've been going to school for a long time or I went to school for a long time. Um, I have a bachelor's in political science and French, which I don't use anymore, a law degree, a master's degree, a PhD that will be done this year, um, finally. So um, I am interested in and do research in political behavior and public policy. Um, as I mentioned, I went to law school. I enjoy good lawyer jokes. I practiced for six years before um, going back, getting um, a graduate degree on top of the law degree, and actually moving into teaching as a full-time profession. Like you, I am busy. I have um, two children. I have a dog, a cat, a husband, that whole nine yards. I also have a full-time teaching position at the university, and I run our Master's of Public Administration program. So I have kind of a full slate of things and on top of that I serve on a board of a nonprofit here in Southeast Michigan. So I know that I'm not the only busy one. I know that likely you are busy and um, we're going to try and work together to make this work as seamlessly as possible. Um, I have weird obsessions like everybody else. Um, what do I mean by that? I love Joe Biden memes um, and I've loved them before they were popular. Um, if you ever come to my office, you'll see my Joe Biden mug um, sitting on my desk. Um, I am a big Beyonce fan, um, and so every once in a while you might hear a reference to that. Um, and I generally love watching new documentaries and documentary series. I find them fascinating. So if you have a tip on a good one on Hulu or Netflix, let me know. So these are basic course connectivity requirements. I know some of this is going to sound very simple, and it is, but you would be surprised how many times someone signs up for an online class without realizing that the class is online and what that actually requires. So before you go any further, make sure that you meet these basic requirements. Um, the first Seems obvious, but you need to have access to the internet. That does not mean you need to have internet at home, although that's probably the easiest way to get this done, but you need to have regular, reliable internet access. Of course, as a student of the university, you can get internet access at the university through the computer labs and the Wi-Fi on campus. Um, you can also use public library, but you can also use your home internet or work internet and so on. Um, it, again, it seems obvious, but reliable internet is important for video lectures and, and participating in some of the things we'll be doing. Um, Blackboard and email. Um, I don't like Blackboard. I don't love it. It's a necessary evil, um, especially in an online class. So all of your assignments will be submitted through Blackboard. Um, if you have problems using Blackboard to submit an assignment, you're not the first one, um, but take a screenshot um, of what is going on or take a photo with your um, with your phone and email me immediately along with a copy of the assignment um, so that I can have a backup copy and you're not penalized for missing the assignment. Um, problems with Blackboard don't excuse you from submitting an assignment um, or submitting an exam. So if you are having a problem grab your phone, record what's going on, um, either photos, videos, show it to me. Um, not only 
Does that help document what happened to you? But it helps me go to the people on campus who are in charge of this type of thing and say, this is what students are, are, are um, seeing on their end. How do I fix that? So this um, is really important to make sure we iron out all the kinks. So if you meet all of these things, then let's move right on forward. So first, let's talk about some of the goals we have in this class. Um, you can you know, look at the catalog description, but I like to break these up into goals so that we know we have something we're working towards. The first is that you have a basic understanding of our government structure, um, including institutions and procedures. Typically, every four years, everybody realizes that we have an electoral college. Um, that's something that I want you to know before we hit the next presidential election. Um, things of that nature. The second is to strengthen and develop the ability to critically evaluate issues of local, state, and national importance. In other words, I want you to be active politically as an engaged um, member of society. And finally, I want to provide you to exposure to some of the underlying primary documents. We'll be reading some documents in this class that were many documents that were written at the founding of this country. Um, and I think those are really important to have an understanding of and to at least have some familiarity with as you are discussing politics in the future, um, whether you move on to study more political science um, or whether you just are an engaged citizen. So course materials. You can see what the book looks like there. It is very easy to find. Um, it's a 2003 copy of the Essential Federalist and Anti-Federalist Papers. It is not an uh, all-inclusive selection. Um, you can find more inclusive volumes, but it is the essential ones, um, as it says. So that's what we're going to be using. It's a fairly cost-effective book, which is one of the reasons why I use it. But the other is I think that it's important to expose students to what was being talked about when the Constitution was written, when these institutions came about, etc. So your knowledge will be gained from three sources. The course readings, which will primarily come from the textbook, but there are some that will be on Blackboard as well. Um, video lectures like this one. And participation in blogs and Twitter chats. And we're going to break those down in a minute here. One quick note and yet quick but very important. Academic honesty. I take that seriously. Um, as you can see here, plagiarism is the taking credit for someone else's work or ideas or submitting a piece of work which is not entirely the student's own work without fully and accurately attributing those same portions to their correct source. Um, as a rule of thumb, cite everything you didn't write. Stay on the safe side. Um, so I use the meme here. I'm a big meme fan, as you'll see throughout this presentation. Uh, cite all the things if they weren't your original words or ideas. Um, and this is not a formal citation method, but at least it explains where I got it from. This is a meme that was created based on a webcomic blog post from Hyperbole and a Half, which can be found here, and I provide a link. I'm not looking for, in most of these things that you're using for me, formal citation. Um, in fact, our writing projects are all blog based, so I don't expect you to necessarily use APA or MLA long form citations. However, you have to give enough so that I know if you're citing to something, um, whether it's one of our readings or something else entirely, that I know where it's coming from and don't think that you have tried to pass it off as 100% your own. So first, an overview of grading and assignments. There are four major components to your grade. The first um, is lecture and reading quizzes. There are 10 of these throughout the course, um, and they will be graded um, on a five point each basis. There are five questions each. Each question's worth a point. Um, in some ways, that means these are fairly low value, but they do add up to 10% of your grade. So this is probably a benefit to you in that it is easier to earn points really than to lose points. Another benefit for you with regard to this um, is something that we'll be talking about in just a minute, which is that we'll be using these for other assignments as well. Then there are exams. There are two exams, a midterm and a final um, for 100 points each, a total of 200 points. If you were to take this class during the normal 
um, fall or winter semesters. I do have three exams usually. It just doesn't make sense in a seven-week course to have three exams. So we have a midterm and a final and that's it. There are four blog posts. Two of them are um, I think less intense than the other. So two of them are at 25 points each. Those are the first two and two of them are at 50 points each for a grand total of 150 points or 30 percent of your grade. Finally, we have uh, Twitter chats, which you will have to pick two of the scheduled four Twitter chats. You can also do a third for extra credit. Um, 50 points each for the main two um, that you choose to engage in for a total of 100 points or 20 percent of your grade. Um, so total overall, there are 500 points in this course, um, and that you can see the percentage of your grade that each item represents. A quick note, for purposes of our course, the week starts on Monday at 12 a.m. and ends the following Sunday at 11.59 p.m. So if I say something is due this, this week, that means at the latest it is due this coming Sunday at 11.59 p.m. So lectures and quizzes. The lectures, I try and keep them short. I'm trying to keep this one short, but there's a lot of information to pack in. Short video lectures on that unit's key points. This includes a discussion of the readings, but really focuses on key concepts. This is the primary source for exam questions. I will post lecture slides for you. You will have the links to the videos, all of that. This is where I get my material for the exams and also for the quizzes, which is uh, which is a big part of this. So they cover the lecture, the quizzes cover the lecture and the readings for that unit. Um, there are five questions, one point each, and there are a total of ten throughout the semester. Um, and there are no late submissions accepted for these. Um, they are the questions are true, false, multiple choice, fill in the blank, very short. You get fifteen minutes to take it. If you have watched the lecture and have the PowerPoints there with you, um, you should be okay um, and have done the reading and you, you should be okay and should not have problems. The benefit to doing this um, other than just kind of checking up and making sure you're keeping up with the readings and what have you is that you will kind of have a preview of the types of things that I look for on the exams and in fact you'll be able to go look back on your quiz scores and your quiz answers and see where you got things right or wrong. Don't be surprised if some of these questions reappear on an exam uh, down the road. Speaking of exams, uh, yes, we have to do them. Um, it's really the easiest way to figure out if you are meeting certain benchmarks and um, they are non-cumulative, but they do build on previous material. You can't just forget things. So there's two here, a midterm and a final exam. These are timed exams on Blackboard. You have two hours to complete each one. Um, they will have kind of three parts, really. Um, the first is true-false. The second is um, fill-in-the-blank. And the final part is short answer. Sometimes there's multiple choice. I am not trying to trick you with these. I am very straightforward with my exams. I don't want to trick you. I don't want to try and make you hunt something down. That's not the goal. The goal is that if you have watched the videos, if you have kept up with the reading, if you have done the quizzes, you should know what's coming. Um, you will have the entire exam period to take it, meaning if this is an exam week, um, you will have the entire week to take it. Um, but you will only have two hours within that week. So once you start taking the exam, uh, that two hours clock starts running. You cannot leave the exam and come back to it. Um, and because you have that entire time to take it, doesn't mean that if, you know, you have six days of nothing and on the seventh day you have, uh, you get ill, you come down with the flu or something. Um, and I hope that's not the case. But that doesn't mean you're excused from taking the exam because you've had the entire week to do it. So you should really plan ahead. And while I'm not encouraging you to rush into the exam, I am saying be cognizant of the fact that you only have a week to do it, and it's better to get it done than to not get it done. Uh, blog posts. I have made a vow to not use discussion boards as the main way of gauging student participation 
with the course material. One of the ways that we will uh, avoid boring discussion boards, boring for you and for me, is through four different blog posts throughout the semester. Um, you'll be posting these to the course blog on Blackboard, and I'll show you that in just a second here. There are four posts as follows. The introductory post, which is actually due this week, so again, remember when I said it's due this week, it means it's done due Sunday night. So that is due the 6th at 11.59 p.m. It's a fairly easy blog post. Um, so you should be able to get that done fairly quickly. The second is the political typology post, which we will be doing um, the following week, which is due by the 13th at 11.59 p.m. And then the two longer ones, the first is a political documentary review. I will be posting appropriate and pre-approved documentaries, uh, meaning you don't have to seek out extra approval from me, um, that you can actually use to do this assignment. Um, and that'll be due on June 3rd, and then the editorial, which will be the final blog post due on the 17th. As these dates um, come closer, you will have the blog post description so you can start working on that. In fact, it is my goal in the next two weeks to have all of them up um, for the entire semester so that if you wanted to work ahead, you could. So let's go ahead and take a look real quick at the blog posts. So when you log into, and let me turn off edit mode here so it looks a little more like what you have. Um, there will be announcements and in fact by the time you get this there probably will be. Um, what you'll want to go to here um, is blog exams Twitter chat guidelines. Um, as you can see the Twitter chat information which we'll talk about in a second is up here and then you'll see blog one introductory post. Once we are done with the submission period for this I'm going to move the old links into this folder that says old links um, just to kind of keep this page as clean as possible. So if you click on blog one it will take you to the full discussion of the blog. Now usually the blog, my blog introduction won't be this long, um, but this is an introductory one. We're doing this a little more survey format, although I encourage you to write more rather than less, um, and trying to keep it both fun but also informative. So when you go in here, what you will do then is go into the blog posts that you were dealing with and create blog entry and go from there and follow the instructions. Pretty self-explanatory um, once you get in there, but you know if you haven't done it before, it can be a bit tricky. So Twitter chats, um, don't get scared. Um, and even more so now that we have a president that uses Twitter, I think this is an even more important skill. Um, as part of my quest to get rid of discussion boards, a couple of years ago, I came up with the idea of doing Twitter chats um, in lieu of discussion boards. Um, I know that this is an online class and we don't have scheduled meeting times. So what I do is I offer four scheduled chats. Um, that's pretty much the full gamut uh, of times. You can look at the times that are available and we'll do that in a second. You have to pick two of the four, just two for full credit. So throughout the semester you have to schedule in two of those chats. They're an hour long each. They're painless, I promise. They're actually quite fun. And the feedback that I've gotten from students about this is that they were a little bit nervous at first, but then it was a really fun way to participate. And once you're done, you're done. It's easy for me to grade and it's actually meaningful for you to use. Um, you'll need a Twitter handle. If you have not used Twitter before, don't worry. I have links for you. Um, and helpful tools to get you started. If you already have a Twitter handle and you want to use that, that's fine, but your Twitter handle cannot be private, meaning we as a class have to be able to see your posts um, without um, getting permission from you on a case-by-case -case basis. So if you have a Twitter and you want to continue to use it, that's fine, but you cannot have a private account. You have to have a public account. Um, if you either do not have a Twitter handle or you don't want to make your other account public, you'd rather leave it private, then you're going to need to create one for this class. Um, again, I've posted links for you to get you started with that. Um, you have to both post your, um, or make available your, your 
Twitter handle, meaning that it's public. And then when you sign up for each Twitter chat, you will provide me with a um, link to your um, to your handle so that I can follow you. And I do follow you. Um, so I encourage you to follow me as well. Um, and there are links all over the place, but it's at Prof McManaway. Um, there are topics for each of the chats, um, three of which will be chosen by you, one of which will be chosen by me just for sake of time. Um, and I'll show you in a minute how you can weigh in on the topics for those next three chats. Um, how you participate in the chat. You will sign up at the appropriate link, so there's a sign up sheet for each chat, at least three hours ahead of time so that I know okay, there's five people signed up, let's move forward, um, or there's only one person signed up or there's no one signed up, we're not going to have the chat today. Um, I have not run into a situation where we have not had the chat. Usually people tend to evenly split themselves up enough, um, but I do this just so I know who to expect. Um, participate according to the rules. There's a guideline sheet using the appropriate hashtag for that chat and have a fun, productive discussion. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of what is up on Blackboard um, to help get you started. So remember, we were over here on the blog post. If we go back to blogs, exams, and Twitter chat guidelines, we can go first into Twitter chat information. The first page here is the Twitter chat guidelines. This is the essentially the assignment sheet for this. I explain in more depth why we're doing this, what's a hashtag, how do you participate, and what counts as full participation. So I say here you have to you know, make so many original statements, respond to so many of your classmates' statements, and so on. Um, this goes much more quickly and smoothly than, um, than a discussion board. It's a little less um, stilted and, and boring. It's just, it's fun. Um, and Twitter is a good skill um, to know this day and age, um, though I'm sure 10 years from now it'll be replaced by something else. Um, but at least for right now, I think it's important to uh, know. If you have to leave during the chat, um, that is one thing that people, oh, I have to leave 15 minutes early. Well, make sure to front load your, um, your participation. These chats are an hour long. Try and make sure you block off that hour. And, you know, if, if, the, if the discussion continues, we can continue the discussion. Um, but make sure you get your key points in at the beginning, right? That doesn't mean to ram all this information down our throats. Um, but it means if you know you have to leave five or ten minutes early, then use the first, you know, 45, 50 minutes to make your, your points, have your discussion, and then quietly leave. Um, but you can also set up Twitter on your smartphone or tablet. Um, you can take it with you. This shouldn't be hard to do. In fact, you can do it while you're doing other things as well. So that's another reason why Twitter uh, proves to be a, a pretty useful format with this. In addition to the guidelines, uh, I have a couple of links here. One is a link to my Twitter page. Um, so you can go ahead and follow. Um, there are FAQs, a wiki how, and this page is really funny. This, Mom, this is how Twitter works. So this is really like explaining something to um, an older woman who has not used Twitter before. Um, so this is just kind of a funny way to do it, but it's actually quite informative. Um, if we go back a step, um, what you'll see here is a couple of sign-up sheets. The first is a link to the Twitter topics poll. So what you'll do is you'll click on that and I've listed out some topics. You can also write in one other topic that's not listed um, that you might want to see in a future um, Twitter chat. Pick up to three um, and then submit it with your name. The other thing is the sign-up sheet. If you know, okay, this is a chat I'm going to participate in, um, go ahead and click on it. Um, pretty easy. And this, as I mentioned, where you would input your Twitter handle. That way I know who has signed up, who I need to look for in terms of grading, and that type of thing as well. All right, so that is a brief overview of the Twitter chats. It's not all inclusive. There's more information in this Twitter chat box um, than what is there. But I think that you'll 
find this to be a useful exercise and a useful um, use of your time. Remember I said that you have to do two of the four. So if we look at the schedule here, and we can just look at the syllabus, and if you look at dates and times of chance, chats, and remember these are all Flint local time, so if you're not in this time zone, um, you'll want to make sure that you make a note of what time that would be and your time. Um, if you look, there are different days um, so this is a Monday. I think this is a Thursday. There are different days for each of these. I've moved them around the week some. Um, we have one at 3 p.m., one at uh, 2 at 9.30 p.m., and one at 11 a.m. I tried to vary the times a little bit, figuring that people have other responsibilities, whether that's work, other classes, kids, etc. Um, so pick two. You can also pick a third um, for extra credit. So one difference on the sign-up sheets that you'll see starting with the third chat is that it'll say, are you doing this one for extra credit? Um, you can get up to 25 extra credit points by doing an extra Twitter chat, which is half the value of a normal one. So the normal one is 50 points, um, but you can get up to 25 with um, your third installment of the... So a quick note on late assignments. Due dates are firm. You know these well in advance. The schedule is up. The schedule is likely not going to change. We just quite frankly don't have enough time for the schedule to change. Um, if something does change, however, it will be announced on Blackboard and the schedule will be altered um, and I'll put up a new one. Um, like I said, not likely to happen. Exams. There will be no late exams given unless you can prove that you were in the hospital admitted to the hospital, not just went to the emergency room one night, or otherwise incapacitated in a major way for the entire week the exam was available. Remember what I said about getting the exam in prior to the last minute. You can leave it till the last minute, but you're taking a chance. Um, unless you can prove that you're otherwise incapacitated for the entire exam period, you will not get a redo on the exam. Uh, Twitter chats. There are no late submissions on Twitter chats. It is just not possible. I can't recreate that for you. Um, so plan accordingly. Now, if you sign up for a chat and something comes up and you can't make it, I'm not necessarily holding you to that. Um, that's used more as a guide. However, you need to at least do two of them. Um, so you need to be cognizant of that fact. Um, all the other assignments generally lose 5% of the grade for each day that the assignment is late, up to one week. Um, you can look in the syllabus for all the details about that. A couple of final notes. Um, I'm aware that some of you live near or on campus while others might not even live in the state at all. Um, I'm available to you in many ways, including email, which is my preferred way of communication. Uh, phone, and I have listed my Google Voice phone number, not my office phone number, but my Google Voice number um, on all of the materials because you can either call me or text me there. Um, so, and either one is fine. You can feel free to text um, all hours of the night if you want, I suppose, but um, I'm going to answer it in an appropriate hour for me. Um, we can also have in-person meetings or we can even set up an online chat using Google Hangout. Um, or something of that nature. Um, my goal for you is to be there in whatever capacity you need me and to make this smooth and as useful as possible. Some of you may go on to study government or politics uh, or policy in the future, and I'm certainly um, open to discussing your future options with you as well. Um, if you have any questions whatsoever, please do not hesitate to ask. It is better to ask and know the answer than it is to just kind of take a guess um, and assume that you're doing the right thing. So I've given you multiple ways to get a hold of me. The only thing I do ask is that you don't send questions about individual assignments through Twitter. Um, I know that is one point of contact. Um, however, when you do that, I don't always see them right away, and that's probably the worst way to contact me in terms of assignments or due dates or that type of thing. Um, but otherwise, Twitter's fine to just kind of stay in touch, and I tweet about political stuff. I mean, this is my life. So if you want to think about topics and, and kind of get news stories that way, 
um, I would certainly encourage you to have conversations with me. In fact, many of the people who follow me on Twitter have had me in a class before where I've required Twitter or have announced it and use it in some way. And if I think there's something that is of interest to students in the class, I will tweet it out with, you know, a Paul 120 hashtag so you guys can see that. Um, finally, the speed of the class. There's no two ways about this. This is an accelerated class. It moves at essentially twice the pace of a fall or winter class, um, and sometimes it feels faster than that. Right now, before things really ramp up, and it's going to happen very quickly here, make the commitment now and get organized. Get your calendar, get your phone out, get your Google Calendar, whatever you use, and put the assignment due dates in there and set an alarm for yourself that shows up a few days ahead of time or however long you think you'll need, um, so you don't miss something. Um, you can succeed in this class, even though it's an accelerated semester, um, and we have to kind of often take what would be two weeks of material and fit it into one week. Um, you can succeed, and that can be very rewarding for you as well. Um, so make a plan to stay ahead. If you feel like working ahead on the readings, that's the best way to get ahead. Um, and I'm going to try and have everything up ready to go so that you can work ahead if you want to. I know this has been a little bit long, but I wanted to make sure to kind of give you the fill in the details version of this rather than just handing you the syllabus and telling you to figure it out on your own. If you have any questions, contact me. I've given you multiple ways to do it. Um, otherwise, I will see you in the next video lecture which you have already seen up if you've watched this video and you know how to find it. Um, and of course, I will um, am available multitudes of ways, but you can find me on Twitter as well. I think this is going to be a great semester. I look forward to this, and I think that this is going to be a class that you hopefully truly remember. Thanks.